Live from the NBC Montana studios, this is NBC Montana Today. Good morning, Montana. I'm Jason Hurst. And if you're just waking up, thanks for joining us. Let's try to get you prepared for your day. So go grab that cup of coffee. Here's what you need to know. Fort Peck tribes continue their fight to gain a closer satellite election office. What the steps tribal members are taking to fix the issue and where offices could be put in place. Plus, a search committee uh, search continues for a missing woman in the Helena area. What are the latest efforts in finding Megan Reed rounds? And low-income households may receive extra money for bills this winter. Where this funding would come from and factors applicants need to qualify for aid. Those answers and much more coming up shortly. Well, the time is 6.30 on a Tuesday morning. Temperatures below freezing in Kalispell and Butte. Cold enough to support a light frost in Missoula. 36, it's 38 right now in Bozeman. You may need a jacket this morning. You don't need rain gear by the afternoon. You're not even going to need that jacket. We're tracking near record highs today and tomorrow across western Montana. Of course, you can see that three-day forecast on the right-hand side of your screen. Hour by hour, though, if you're making outdoor plans, 72 to around 2 p.m., perfect time to get outdoors. Maybe a noticeable breeze this afternoon could see winds up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, for Bozeman, temperatures right around 70 by 2 p.m., mid-70s as we head into that 5 o'clock hour. Cold front moves in tomorrow. We'll have the details coming up in 10 minutes. A crews continue to search for a missing horseback rider northeast of Helena. Megan Reeder Rounds was last seen in the McMaster Hills Recreation Area on Friday. Search and rescue units from Jefferson and Lewis and Clark counties are searching on the ground, while drones from various law enforcement agencies are searching the air. Now, if you have any information on her whereabouts, please contact the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office. And we're continuing to look into claims of voter suppression in the state. Now, on Monday, a court hearing began in Glasgow to determine the fate of satellite voting on the Fort Peck Reservation. Here is NBC Montana's Bowen West with the latest. We told you last month when members of the Fort Peck tribes said a lack of satellite election offices on the reservation was causing voter suppression. Now, a judge in Glasgow will decide if the Secretary of State, Valley and Roosevelt County failed to provide services to voters. And these clerk and recorders continue to treat this work as it is elective and discretionary. They are directed to do their job. Do your job. For some tribal members, it can be almost a 60 mile round trip to get to the nearest election office. The lawsuit would force the respective counties and secretary of state to create satellite election offices in Fraser and Poplar to help ease the burden of travel. Brett Healy, a consultant for the tribes, said this is a matter of equality. Uh, it's not that hard to make it equal or more equal, if you will. And uh, they just aren't doing their job. And that, you know, oftentimes in court cases, that's called bad faith. I'll let you know what is decided. Make sure to tune in to NBC Montana for complete Decision 2024 coverage. Reporting in Missoula, Bowen West, NBC Montana. It's that time of year when temperatures start to drop and home heaters get turned on. NBC Montana's Jacob Owens explores the resource available to help some residents spend less on their winter heating bills. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program has been around for decades, providing low-income households with extra money to heat their homes when it's needed the most. It's intended just to help defray the cost of the added expense rather than pay your whole winter heating bills. Sometimes it works out that way, you know, sometimes it doesn't. The assistance program, otherwise known as LIHEAP, provides eligible homeowners with a one-time payment. For example, the single family-based benefit for a one-bedroom electrically powered space is more than $800. On top of the one-time payments, Chandler says many utility providers in Missoula, Ravalli, and Mineral Counties provide monthly discounts on bills. The amount homeowners receive is calculated on a sliding scale based on many factors like income, type of home, and type of heating. Renters can also get support. Schindler says the Missoula-based Human Resource Council received about 4,000 applications last winter. The same application also includes weatherization services. We hear that. I don't want to take from somebody else that needed it more than me. But in the 20 plus years that I've done this, 
um, we've never run out of funding. We've never turned anybody away. So the funding is there. Um, just apply. Schindler says roughly three quarters of those who apply for LIHEAP qualify for assistance. For information on how you can apply, visit our homepage, NBCMontana.com. Reporting in Missoula, Jacob Owens, NBC Montana. Now, your NBC Montana Sports Report. Well, during his press conference, the first words out of Bobby Houck's mouth was how his team has to move on to the next game. And that's clearly the message ringing through the Montana locker room following a tough shootout loss to Weber State. Yesterday, I unpacked Montana's defensive struggles as of late, but what about their red-hot offense and how it could be the key to a win against Northern Arizona on Saturday? Over the past two weeks, Montana's offense has single-handedly kept the Grizz in the game. The Grizzlies rank third in total offense in the entire FCS. Running the football has been a staple of the program for a long time, but right now all eyes are on quarterback Logan Fife, who's thrown for 708 yards and seven touchdowns in his first two Big Sky games. Assuming Fife gets the start, his game will be put to the test this week against an NAU team that currently allows less than 160 passing yards a game. The Lumberjacks defense ranks 15th in the nation. So Montana running back Nick Osmo spoke on what's made the offense succeed early as well as minor improvements the unit can make. It all starts up front with those guys uh, protecting the quarterback, opening the holes. Um, there's obviously room to grow. We need to get in the film and um, look at the stuff that we could have capitalized on last week. Um, can't give the ball up. Um, that's something that we emphasize and uh, something that I didn't do a good job with last week. And um, I'm going to work to make strides to improve that. And the ranked matchups don't stop in Missoula. Over in Bozeman, a top 10 matchup is going down under the primetime lights of Bobcat Stadium as Idaho is coming to Bozeman. Funny enough, the Vandals are coming off a win against the team the Grizz are taking on this week. And it was the Vandals defense stopping NAU on the final drive to seal the win. And it's that same rushing defense going up against MSU's rush attack that will make viewers bust out the popcorn. The Vandals rank seventh in the nation against the run, allowing under 100 yards per game. This week, their task was stopping an MSU rush attack that averages over 300 yards a game and feature back Scott Trey Humphrey, who's fourth in the nation in rushing yards. Just look at their numbers, they're giving up less than 20 points a game, less than 100 yards rushing for a game, they have 19 sacks, um, you know, so they've made it really hard on opposing offenses to, to run the ball first, but then, you know, when they've gotten in those passing situations, they've really been able to get after the quarterback. Hard to believe the Montana Montana State offenses are only separated by nine yards as both schools are ranked second and third in the nation in total offense. Who's ready for a nice, friendly, and healthy debate about which one is better? Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, for now in studio, Alex Hoffman, NBC Montana Sports. After watching that, I think we're all ready for some football. And speaking of football, now Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster joins us. And Brooke, it's homecoming for the University of Montana. Are we looking at some good weather for this weekend? You know, definitely looking at some pretty good weather. But I mean, as far as football weather goes, it would be nicer if it was going to be a little bit cooler. We're talking high temperatures this weekend, above normal in the low 70s. And we've got temperatures today that are going to get close to the 80 degree mark. Live look outside right now, Kalispell and Missoula. A little smoky haze out there for us this morning in Missoula. Air quality is going to fluctuate between good and moderate for us. Sending the kids out the door this morning may need a jacket. After all, we do have temperatures this morning sitting in the 30s, but by the afternoon, high temperatures are reaching into the 70s. From media interviews to campaign stops, I'm Atrell Nishar with why some Democrats want Vice President Harris to switch up her strategy. At NBC Montana, you can be a part of our award-winning news and weather team. It's called Chime In. Here's how it works. The next time you see news or weather happening, snap a picture or video and send it our way. Go to the NBC Montana app and open the menu on the top left. Scroll down to Chime In and click Submit Content. Add your pictures and videos by pressing Upload. Add a comment, a location, then select your topic. It can be Montana weather, news, sports, animals, and much more. Enter your name, email address, and agree to the conditions. Chime In connects you directly to our news and weather teams. So stay with NBC Montana to see your pictures and videos on air and online. And I'll be working for you, alerting you to severe weather. 
Depend on meteorologist Mitchell Coombs. Live weeknights at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. on NBC Montana.